Good afternoon. My name is David Velasquez, and in this data mining presentation, I am going to be using Wicca to do an analysis on the quality of red wine. To, to start off with, um, we'll go to the raw data, and this is how I got the data from the UCI repository. And in this format, Wicca won't be able to work with it to do an analysis, so we have to convert it to a format that it can work with. So the first thing is to convert this from a comma separated to a column separated attributes type uh, data set, right? Like this. Now the next problem is that uh, all this data doesn't have any uh, normative or categorical attributes. So I need to create one. If I don't create uh, any categorical data, Wicca won't be able to do an analysis. So what I use here is an if statement, which is going to provide me categories for certain assigned quality values. All right. So now I have low quality wine, average quality wine, and excellent quality wine, which is derived from the quality uh, numerical values here. All right. So from there, now we have that data set, we save it. The next thing to do is that we need to convert uh, that CSV file into an ARF file, which is basically a file that uh, Wicca can read and, and work with. So we go here, we look for the file that we just uh, pre-processed. Right, and this here it is. And then to convert it, we just save as, and from a CSV, we just convert it to an R file, save it, and it is ready to go and to work with. So here, we go to our GUI interface for Wicca, and we start um, creating our model to see what kind of uh, conclusion we can derive from the data set. So here, we go and we find the, uh, the file that we just uh, converted to an R file so we can work with it. Then from there, the next thing to do would be to get a, a class assigner. And then from here, we drag the data over to the class assigner. Next thing to do is to configure this, we need to make sure that we're assigning the correct uh, response variable. In this case, we did it automatically. See, nom, nominal value, quality class, that's the last column that I created in the data set. So, right, we have that ready. Uh, the next thing is the cross validation folder. And this is what's going to cross validate the uh, the training set, right? And we're, uh, this happens uh, automatically, but it's a tenfold, just to make sure that it's a good model. Uh, cool. And then from here, we're actually going to use the um, the method that we're going to use to analyze the data. And in this case. We're going to use a decision tree. Move to J48. And then here, we, we set our training set and our test set. Uh, yep, classifier performance evaluator. So 
we're going to use this to evaluate the decision tree and make sure that we're, we're getting reliable uh, conclusions from it. Batch classifier. We'll put this guy up here. Okay. And then the uh, the last step of the process is the actual visualization, and this is where we can start deriving our conclusions. So the text viewer and a model performance charts. We get some visuals. Okay, now to confirm that it's all working correctly, we run it, no errors, so it's working beautifully. Okay, now some of Okay, here we can see some of the results. So this is um, a way of how Weka breaks down the data, so it tells you how many instances we have. In the records, um, for example, based on the classes, we have 13, a little over 1,300 of average class wines. We have about 217 that are excellent quality wines and 63 that are low quality. And then the interesting thing comes with this, where we can actually do some visuals and uh, play around with the data. All right. So here, we set this to the color quality to the class which is um, the, the quality class that I had created. Uh, for this guy, we can do a numerical value. Yeah, for the quality class. That's for the hue of quality. Yep. And then here we can just start playing around with all the different variables and see kind of like what sticks out and what the data is telling us. So from my analysis, uh, one of the variables that I saw had a significant contribution to the quality of red wine. So this was one of them, the volatility acidity. So from here we can see that so red is excellent wine. Uh, blue is average and uh, the green is uh, low quality. So we can see that uh, the best of the best wines tend to have a uh, lower index in terms of volatility acidity, right? Tends to end here around at about 0 0.85, 0 0.75, whereas all the other wines have to have higher numerical values for, for this. So that's one indicator. Low volatility acidity means Typically, it's a good indicator that you have a good quality wine uh, on your hands. Uh, the next one was the uh, sulfates. So here's another one that I noticed that the data was uh, speaking to me. So uh, same kind of thing as the last one. I noticed that um, when it comes to the excellent quality wines, they tend to have less sulfates than, than the other ones. So... Uh, average, um, I can see that like even the low quality wines, they have sulfates, uh, some points that are, are really on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, and if not very low. And then the last one, and I think uh, the biggest contributor uh, that kind of talks to us is the alcohol content. So I noticed that 12% um, seems to be the magic number. So wines that are of low quality do not typically get higher than 12%. You can see that all the data points lie right around here below 12. So basically it's a good bet that if you find a wine that is 12% alcohol content or above, that it's to the very least going to be an average type wine or uh, excellent quality wine, right? Based on how the data is talking to us here. So um, here's one way that uh, Wake Up was able to help me explore this big data set and draw some interesting conclusions. Thank you very much.